And now to an update of a murder on Mojave Lane on Thursday. The victim who was shot and killed has been identified as 45-year-old excuse me, Juan Luna Montijo from Yuma, according to the Yuma County Sheriff's Office. It received a report of a gunshot wound victim around 4.40 p.m. The victim was later pronounced dead at Yuma Regional Medical Center. And now two thieves are still on the run after robbing a jewelry store in Calexico at gunpoint. Calexico police say the two men entered Don Roberto Jewelers Sunday. One suspect had a handgun while the second suspect began to break the display glass case with a hammer. Calexico police say they took off with several pieces of jewelry. Both of the employees that were working there did describe it as a very violent uh, robbery takeover. As far as you know, the, ga the, the handgun produced and pointed in their faces and then being forced to walk to the rear of the store while the second produced a hammer viciously smashing the glass. Both men were last seen driving toward the El Centro area and the suspects wore light blue long sleeve button up shirts. Their faces were covered with masks and one was wearing a white helmet. If you do have any information on this case as well, you are asked to contact the Calexico Police Department at the number on your screen. Now, multiple drug busts over the weekend lead to over $2 million worth of drugs recovered. Two undocumented immigrants were found Friday at the Hakumba Wilderness region, with them a half-pound package that tested positive for fentanyl, according to Customs and Border Protection. The following day, a simple, a simple traffic stop on a 2022 Honda Civic on Interstate 10 east of Golf Center Parkway turned into the discovery of 10 bundles of meth after a Border Patrol dog alerted agents to the trunk of the car. The driver is identified as a U.S. citizen. Sunday night, a Freightliner tractor trailer approached the border checkpoint on Highway 111. Border Patrol agents found a trash bag full of smaller bags in the sleep area of the trailer. Testing confirmed the bags were full of cocaine and fentanyl. The driver is reportedly a Mexican national. All four suspects from these separate incidents were all taken into custody. And a cloned Border Patrol SUV was found Sunday evening on Highway 98. The Chevy Tahoe was seen on remote video surveillance around 6.30 p.m. Border Patrol agents were alerted to the area and attempted to stop the SUV. However, the driver did not stop. Another agent then set up a tire deflation device ahead of the direction the SUV was headed. After deflating the tires, the SUV was stopped near Mount Signal Road and Highway 98. Border Patrol reports the driver then got out of the car and hid behind brush. The driver, described as an 18-year-old U.S. citizen, was taken into custody and the vehicle was seized. Now this story does lead us to our topic of the day. Does the cloned Border Patrol vehicle raise your concerns over border security? We definitely want to hear from you. Voting is easy. Just head over to kyma.com forward slash polls. Please let us know what you think. We will have your final tally right here tonight at 10. And for the latest information on our crime news, you can also download our KYMA app available in the App Store. Arizona now has some of the strictest abortion laws in the entire United States following a ruling by a Pima County judge that reinstated a law banning abortions. It was put on the books when Arizona was not even a state. Since the ruling, Planned Parenthood again has paused all abortion procedures in the state but are continuing the legal fight, asking the Court of Appeals for a stay on the ruling, which would pause the ban, to the, which would pause the total ban, excuse me. And this case could go all the way to the state Supreme Court amid the legal back and forth. Maricopa County Attorney Rachel Mitchell is making one thing very clear. I will not prosecute women for having abortions, and no statute even suggests a woman will ever be prosecuted for her decision. Arizona now is the 12th state to ban abortions with no exceptions for rape or incest. And now in today's homegrown report, it's that time of year when thousands of date trees in our area are being harvested. The Bard Valley Date Growers Association manages over 7,000 acres in the desert southwest. The association grows medjool dates, also known as the king of dates. Date pack processes the dates grown in our local region.
We are in the middle of the busiest part of the season. Our season usually starts the last week of August and it could go all the way to the first week of November. And they'll pick the, tree, the dates that are ripened for the first time and then they'll go back a second time to check again for the dates that are ripened and then they'll go a third time to do a third check and then clean up, which is what we're seeing behind us. After harvest, Date Pack makes sure the dates are ripe enough to distribute to local chain grocery stores, as well as ship them to over 35 different countries. Today, Date Pack is the largest grower and packer of Medjool dates, offering full year availability. And this Friday, the Imperial Valley LGBT Resource Center is offering free Uber rides to and from the clinic for the monkeypox vaccine. However, the passenger limit is 20 people and the clinic is from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. If you have any questions or want any further updates on this event, details can be found on our website, kyma.com. And taking a look here at the RV World Yuma Skycam, it is again a beautiful day today, but it is still a hot one. I guess we are used to that here in the desert southwest, right? We do have some winds going on right now as well. It's not too, too heavy though. Let's take a look at these temperatures right now. 105 in Yuma, 18% humidity and 6 mile per hour winds. Taking a look at El Centro, 106 degrees, 16% humidity, and 8 mile per hour winds. Now we are going to have more on weather for you in just a bit, but you can always go to our website, kyma.com, for the latest. And now we are joined by Charles Flynn of Yuma Crossing. Thank you so much for joining us today. Glad to be here. Definitely. So please talk to us about Yuma Crossing, the history about it, and just what it does for our community. Well, back in uh, the year 2000, uh, the Yuma Riverfront was just a total mess, overgrown with non-native vegetation, really inaccessible, crime-ridden people. And so you had a desert community cut off from the river. It was crazy. So the community really wanted to do something. It was going to be very expensive. Uh, we were able to get federal funding uh, to match local funding. And uh, we developed a plan and eventually built um, Gateway Park, West Wetlands, East Wetlands and in, invested over 40 million, of which 10 million was uh, local money from the 2% hospitality tax. The rest were state and federal grants and really transformed the riverfront. And then when we thought we were sort of done in 2010, uh, the state was going to close both state parks, mm -hmm. so we were asked to step in. And again, the 2% money was absolutely essential for us to keep those parks open. Yeah, well, and so talk to us about this 2% because I think there's some confusion surrounding it. This has already been in place in our area. We've already been paying this, you know, at hotels, restaurants, things like that. Um, now it's on the ballot to continue, right? Right, and to give you an idea, this goes back 45, 50 years. I mean, it, it's helped build a lot of the uh, community assets in this community. Um, and um, it does not increase the tax. It's only on bars, restaurants, and hotels. And it is essential for the, for, for the heritage area um, to continue its operations. We want to complete West Wetlands. There's a lot to be done there. We just applied for a quarter million dollar grant to continue to make improvements there, and that has to be matched. So, yeah. uh, and of course, uh, a, a good chunk of it goes to parks. and. Frankly, the maintenance of all the riverfront parks, uh, the, the uh, parks and recreation is responsible for. Mm -hmm. And then a portion of it goes uh, to tourism promotion, which, again, you want that to grow, which right. will help the community and the economy and the tax base. Well, and it's interesting that you're saying that because, you know, as we said, restaurants and hotels, those hotels usually are going to be visitors. They are going to be those tourists. And so they're going to come pay into what we need to continue having them come you know it's Correct. kind of full it comes full <laughs> circle right so you know they're all very beautiful parks um they've been well maintained well taken care of all this time and um it is you know something that is so important for the human community and and we want it to continue one thing that uh folks should know is that um the ballot this year in november is very long it has governor uh, senate congress well this Proposition 417 that extends the tax is at the very bottom of the ballot. Mm -hmm. So I try to tell people, keep on the top of your mind the bottom of the ballot. Yes. Uh, in the downtown riverfront, 
uh, all those amenities have attracted investment. You know, the Hilton Garden Inn was built, uh, the new home two suites, and mm. then, and then I will tell you that 20 years ago, Main Street was pretty sad, s sorry state of affairs, and mm. now it's it's pretty you know hop in place for for nightlife, and <laughs> it's great to see the community enjoying it and connecting to the riverfront and. Uh, you know, it, it's everything we envisioned 20 years ago, and we just want to keep it going. Absolutely. Is there anything else you would like to share with the viewers about um, Ewan Crossing or anything that has to do with the parks? Well, we, um, we are definitely um, making improvements. You know, people who love the West Wetlands, we are committed with the funds that we get, part of the funds we get, to, to improve and to complete West Wetlands. About 70% of West Wetlands is completed, but... We're hoping to complete it in the next five to ten years because it is the most visited and popular park and we want to expand it. Thank you so much, Charles, for joining us. Charles Flynn at Yuma Crossing. Coming up next on 13 on your side, California's position on privatized prisons. We'll be right back. Dear America, I'm revving up to say I'll always go the extra mile for you with the latest tech and all-wheel drive. Thank you for making me the best-selling car in America. Be well, Camry. Every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. It's the all-new Subway Series menu. 12 irresistible new subs. The most epic sandwich roster ever created. It's Subway's biggest refresh yet. You were unemployed and Mr. Jirasi was supporting you. Living under the same roof had its benefits. I didn't work because I was home taking care of our son. The truth of the matter is that's not true. But moving on wasn't so lucrative. You were supported over a period of three and a half years. Mr. Jirasi says that you left him for somebody else. When that didn't work out, now you're coming after him for money. Don't you feel sort of ridiculous? Next Judge Judy. It's back. All right, guys, let's go. We gotta get this, okay? Friday night lights. It's bigger and better than ever. <laughs> That's all the highlights, all the emotions, all the plays, and all the score. Every Friday night at 10:15. <laughs> Are your kids enrolled in school? Their future depends on what they're learning right now. Find an Arizona school near you at azed.gov. Make sure your kids get the academic support they need. Plus, give them community care whenever it's crucial with meal programs, counseling, and more. Find an Arizona school near you at azed.gov or call 602-542-7378. This message is sponsored by the Arizona Department of Education. Welcome back, everyone. An Arizona man and his service dog have been reunited after the dog was stolen. It was an ordeal to get his dog back, and the thief even tried to disguise the dog. Christiana Ramos has the story. Daisy is a three-year-old white bull terrier. She and her owner, Tony Graziani, are inseparable. She's not only my, my service dog, she's my best friend. But he had to face his worst fear when Daisy was stolen from his girlfriend at a local Fry's food store. She fell asleep. Um, she had the dog um, leashed to her ankle. And um, she woke up and the dog was gone, her purse was gone, her phone was gone. After posting on social media and calling the microchip company who sent out missing flyers of Daisy, a QT worker posted online saying she found a dog. Uh, that really wasn't the case. It was just the beginning of kind of a, a Pandora's box, if you say. I mean, it was just one thing after another. When Tony reached out to the QT worker to get Daisy back, she gave the dog to a co-worker. The woman stopped responding to Tony, and he had to file a police report. Police and advocates helped get the dog back home. After two long weeks, Daisy and Tony were in each other's arms. Where were you? It was happy, and then it was... My heart sank a little bit again. But Tony noticed something wrong with Daisy. The spots, I, I was kind of floored when we got her back and I saw that. 
The thief used black dye to disguise her. I, I'm, I'm very shocked and offended and saddened and that anybody would even go, go to the, those lengths um, to, to mask or hide something that belongs to somebody else. He wants Daisy's story to help other dog owners. I don't want anybody to have to, have to go through this or feel the way that, that, that I felt or we felt about losing her. Made it home for Tony. And since being back home, Daisy hasn't left Tony's side. She's going to be here with us for a while. Now, in California, a larger panel of the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals again blocked California's first-in-the-nation ban on for-profit private prisons and immigration detention facilities, finding that it is trumped by the federal government. The three-judge appellate panel last year rejected the 2019 state law that would have phased out privately run immigration jails in California by 2028. The law would have undermined a key piece of the nation's detention system for immigrants. The law signed by Governor Gavin Newsom was one of the many efforts to limit California's cooperation with the federal government as the then president, Donald Trump, imposed hardline policies on immigration enforcement. Coming up next, a look at your full weather forecast. How long will these triple digits last? The bladder control aisle. You won't shop here again. Your private business is your own. The constant struggle is over. Now there's a better way. It's HDIS. We home deliver bladder control products. We understand how you feel. For over 25 years, we've home delivered to many of the 20 million Americans who deal with incontinence. We offer all brands. We pay shipping and use plain, unmarked boxes. If we can help you or someone you care for, call for your free product sample pack and $45 in money-saving coupons. Our counselors will help you choose the right product. And unlike stores, we're always in stock. You'll get what you need. Satisfaction guaranteed. HDIS, the better way. For your free sample pack with your free catalog, $45 in money-saving coupons and free product samples, call 1-800-489-3026. That's 1-800-489-3026. You riff and tear your old statements and bills, but thieves use this information to steal your identity. Don't be a victim. Get the ID Police, the new ink roller that encrypts all your old documents. So before you throw it out, just roll it on, and your information is gone, both on the front and through the back. Even if the paper is held up to the light, even your medical information is safe with the ID Police. So block it out before you throw it out. Order now and get your ID Police for as low as $9.99 and get free shipping too. This offer is not available on Amazon, so call or click now to get your ID police for as low as $9.99 with free shipping. Order now. Call 1-800-903-8817. That's 1-800-903-8817. Or visit GetIDPolice.com. So call 1-800-903-8817 now. Welcome back, everyone. Taking a look here at the RV World Yuma Skycam. Again, it is a hot day today, as it has been for the last several days, but still a lot of hustle and bustle out there. Definitely a lot of vehicles out on the road right now. Let's take a look at these temperatures. 106 for YPG and Welton, 105 for Yuma and Tacna. Dayton coming in at 103 and Imperial at 106 with El Centro at 109. Definitely hotter than the rest. Looking at your low temperatures for the evening, it will be a mix there of mostly the 80s and 70s range with the exception of Dateland at a cooler temperature at, of 67 later on tonight, but 81 for Yuma and 79 for El Centro. High temperatures for tomorrow, a little bit different. It, it's starting to improve, right? 103 for Yuma, 103 for Imperial. However, 104 for El Centro. Still, if you take a look at Salton City, it's still pretty up there. Needless to say, it is starting to come down. Dateland already breaking those triple digits at 93.
And your air quality index presented by the Imperial County Air Pollution Control District is showing moderate air quality conditions for El Centro. However, good air quality conditions for Brawley and Calexico, as well as Nyland, Westmoreland, and Mexicali. Overall, this is a good reading for our air quality index. As you know, this does vary from time to time. Right now, it's in pretty good shape. Taking a look at your seven day forecast for Yuma, 103 for Wednesday, heavy clouds, 10% chance of rain on Wednesday and Thursday. Those clouds will continue, however, until Saturday. But look at Saturday there. We, we break those triple digits, even if it's just for a day. Now this is ever changing. Just yesterday, those were both, uh, Saturday and Sunday were both at 99 degrees. It has changed since then. Maybe it'll change again in our favor, right? Maybe it'll just get cooler, but those triple digits are not gone just yet. We do have 100 and 102 and 101 for the beginning of next week. Now those evening lows are definitely coming down as well. Very noticeably, we're going to be in that 70s range for the entire upcoming week. Now taking a look here at the Imperial Valley seven day forecast, 10% chance of rain Wednesday with 104 degrees, heavy clouds as well. 102 on Thursday, possibility of some clouds here, but take a look, we've got some changes going on here too. Just yesterday, the Saturday and Sunday were down to 98 and now they are gonna be back up to 100. Again, weather as you know is ever changing and that is why it's so important to keep focused on it and to make sure we try to be as prepared prepared as possible. So with that being said, it is definitely still going to be in the triple digits all week long into next week, even in the Imperial Valley with Tuesday at 102. Evening lows, however, still pretty comfortable and, you know, looking good. Actually, it looks even better in the evening lows than it did for the Yuma area. So just different areas, different temperatures. You can always find the latest on our weather on our website, kymay.com. We'll be right back after the break. Four murders. We need to move cautiously on this. What'd you find? He's just getting started. Uh, let's get to work. We gotta find this guy fast. Is it always gonna be like this? Action, action, and action. This job's about finding our fugitive. I have the full capacity of the Federal Bureau of Investigation behind me. New seasons of the FBI's tonight on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. The new Miracle Blade World Class 2012 Professional Series is the best set of knives you'll ever own. The spectacular World Class 2012 Series, over a $300 value for just $39.95. But we're just getting started. We'll send you a complete second set of Miracle Blades for free. That's right, another entire set, a $300 value for free. Just pay shipping and processing. And we're still not done. If you're one of the first 500 callers, we'll send you two additional Miracle Blade World Class Slicers. That's an additional $80 value, totally free. Miracle Blade World Class is also guaranteed for life. We'll replace any damaged knife at any time for any reason for free forever. Over $600 worth of knives for just one payment of $39.95. Don't miss this opportunity. Call right now or just log on to MiracleBlade.com. Richard, big senior year for you. A couple records in reach, yards, touchdowns. How much more do you need? Need about 2,200 yards and about 16 touchdowns. You know, I've got some records as well. I created a player on Madden and broke all the records passing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, mind if we toss it around a little bit? What? What? I'm open. I scored a touchdown in college once. <laughs> Welcome back everyone. Nearly one in five adults who have been infected with coronavirus still have long COVID. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, those suffering report a wide range of symptoms, but one of the most common is loss of smell. In today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither has more on how experts say you can retrain your nose to regain its smell. 
If changes in your sense of smell went along with your COVID-19 infection, you're not alone. Up to 90% of people had some loss of smell. Most people get the sense back. A study published in August shows around 90% of people with mild COVID before the Omicron variant who lost taste or smell fully regain the senses within two years. Others still suffer. Health experts say the loss of smell isn't because of congestion, but rather a change inside you. This virus actually affects the cells that are directly responsible for your sense of smell, uh, you know, way up near the base of your skull and the base of your brain. What happens is that not only do you lose your smell, at least initially, but three to four months later, when these cells are supposed to sort of uh, redivide, you could lose your sense of smell again. Health experts say you can retrain your nose to regain your sense of smell, and these four scents can help. Rose, eucalyptus, clove, and lemon. Use your, your nose to smell these, these scents over and over again, you can slowly potentially start to regain some of that smell over time. A research article published earlier this year suggests essential oils with those scents may help a person recover the sense of smell by stopping inflammation and helping cells regenerate. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Now, researchers say other essential oils that are known to have anti-inflammatory effects may also help with smell recovery as well. We'll be right back. Do you love spending your time on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok? KYMA.com, the number one local website has you covered on the web or on our app. If you have experience with WordPress, love doing everything you can to get eyeballs on a post or story, then KYMA.com is looking for someone like you to be part of a team of digital experts focused on growth. To apply, go to KYMA.com. 13 on your side recognizes talented Hispanic Americans during Hispanic Heritage Month every Thursday at 4 and 6 p.m. Sponsored by your San Diego County Toyota dealers. The new Miracle Blade World Class 2012 Professional Series is the best set of knives you'll ever own. The spectacular World Class 2012 Series, over a $300 value for just $39.95. But we're just getting started. We'll send you a complete second set of Miracle Blades for free. That's right, another entire set, a $300 value for free. Just pay shipping and processing. And we're still not done. If you're one of the first 500 callers, we'll send you two additional Miracle Blade World Class Slicers. That's an additional $80 value, totally free. Miracle Blade World Class is also guaranteed for life. We'll replace any damaged knife at any time for any reason for free forever. Over $600 worth of knives for just one payment of $39.95. Don't miss this opportunity. Call right now or just log on to MiracleBlade.com. It hurts because I've trusted you. It hurts because you got your $25,000 back. Hey, pause. You're a talker. We're three judges. You can't do that with us. I'm okay. not trying to. Stop. You are. Verbal agreements matter. Stop with the words. Hot bench. Welcome back, everyone. As inflation continues to impact family budgets across the country, the White House is looking to bring clarity to the cost of air travel and eliminate hidden fees. President Joe Biden announced new rules to require airlines and travel sites to be more transparent about the fees they charge. Mike Valerio explains what that means for consumers and where else the council is looking to eliminate fees. After a messy summer at the airports, there's a better than 50 percent odd that there's some kind of delay going to affect me almost on a weekly basis. The White House is cracking down on airlines. They cancel on you and you have to pay a fee to rebook. Come on, man. In the third meeting of the White House Competition Council, President Joe Biden announced new rules requiring airlines and travel sites to be more transparent. No more hiding the price that you're paying. Under the Department of Transportation's proposed new plan, airlines would have to disclose up front any fees charged to sit with your child for changing or canceling your flight and for checked or carry-on baggage. 
Airlines for America, or A4A, a trade group representing major U.S. air carriers, issued a statement. Reading in part, quote, A4A member passenger airlines already offer transparency to consumers from first search to touchdown. The council's agenda extends beyond airlines. The group is also looking at lowering or eliminating bank overdraft fees and cell phone carrier termination fees. Something that's uh, weighing down family budgets, unnecessary hidden fees. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. And a nationwide carbon dioxide shortage has been has beer brewers, excuse me, battling to keep their sales from going flat. An Iowa brewer is thinking fast to keep its taps flowing for customers. Lauren Johnson has a story. So that goes back to us making affordable beer uh, because right now with everything going on, it's not easy to do. In chip owner Zach Dobeck has one goal, to keep his beer prices low. Access to aluminum and cardboard have created hurdles for him and other breweries to do that after the pandemic. And now as a CO2 shortage looms, he's getting creative with how he'll keep his shop running. Uh, this is the spunder valve. Experts say the shortage is due to ammonia and ethanol plants that produce CO2 have not been able to keep up with production due to shutdowns or other COVID-19 complications. The technique they use at Kinship allows them to take the natural CO2 that's generated during the fermentation process of their beer and reuse it. It uh, allows us to save a little bit of money as well, so we're not 100% reliant on CO2. The gas is used to give beer its carbonation and help it have a right better now. taste. Kinship produces mostly lagers. Dobek says it's a cheaper option to make and allows them to keep their prices low. We're not feeling the impact as much. Um, but again, this is not, a, this is not the 100% fix. This is just a way that we can self-sustain on that. So what does that mean for beer drinkers? Right now, that's unclear, but beer producers are doing what they can to ensure there's enough to go around. It's too early to tell. Um, Iowans love their beer, so there's no getting around that. Coming up next on 13 on your side, new information on the Winter Haven shooting. Do you worry about going to the dentist? After all, a visit to the dentist can easily cost $2,000 or more. Well, relax. The Carefree Dental Card is now available in your area. Call now and we'll send your actual card at no cost today. With the Carefree Dental Card, you go to the dentist whenever you need and you instantly pay a lot less. Activate your card and you can start using it immediately. From exams and cleanings to more expensive procedures like crowns, dentures, even braces, they're all included with the Carefree Dental Card. Say you go to the dentist today without any card and your bill is, well, ouch. Wait a minute, let's try that again. You go to the dentist today and show your Carefree Dental Card, you save $525. The Carefree Dental Card is just $15.95 a month and everyone in your household can use the same card. Call 1-800-997-4110 to receive your free Carefree Dental Card information kit. Call 1-800-997-4110 now. Everybody has a flashlight, but can your flashlight do this? The Bell & Howell Tactical Flashlight can. The Bell & Howell Tac Light can do things no ordinary flashlight can do. Look, this civilian flashlight puts out pathetic light. But our military-grade Tac Light, that's 22 times as bright. It's so bright, it can be seen up to two nautical miles away. Only a Tac Light has a super bright strobe that can stun and disorient would-be attackers. A car battery will stop working in sub-zero temperatures, but even getting frozen in a block of ice couldn't make our TAC light stop working. It's tough enough to survive getting run over by a Humvee. Try that with a regular flashlight. You can get a Bell & Howell TAC light complete with a lifetime guarantee for just $19.99 plus free shipping. And while supplies last, you can even get a second one. Just pay a separate fee. To order, call 1-800-369-0338. That's 1-800-369-0338 or go to TryTacLight.com. Now on 13 on your side, Calexico police looking for the second suspect who they believe stabbed and killed a man. Plus, the search is on for two men police say robbed a jewelry store. And a shooting victim now identified. 13 on your side continues now. First at 4 continues now.
Thank you for joining us on 13 On Your Side. I'm Arla Youssef. The 21-year-old Yuma man accused of shooting and killing a man in Winter Haven will be released from the Imperial County Jail today, according to the district's attorney's office. That's because the DA's office says it was unable to file charges and that more information is required. In California, charges must be filed within 48 hours of the arrest. If not, the suspect has to be released. The suspect was the was originally accused of killing 41 year old Jesus Galindo while he was with his kids in Winter Haven on Saturday. Galindo's son was also shot. There are no other known potential suspects at this time. And Calexico police are still looking for the second suspect who they believe stabbed and killed a man. The murder happened Saturday morning in the back of a donut shop on Rockwood Avenue, right by the border wall. The victim, 38-year-old Martin Flores, was stabbed once in the neck and once in the shoulder. One of the stab wounds punctured his lung. Flores was flown to a San Diego hospital but died upon arrival. We believe it was just a verbal altercation that occurred earlier that day in the morning and it escalated and it turned into them getting into a physical altercation and one of these suspects produced a knife stabbing uh, our victim. One suspect was arrested and police are still searching for a second suspect. Anyone with information about this crime is asked to contact Calexico PD at the number on your screen. And now to an update of a murder on Mojave Lane Thursday. The victim who was shot and killed has been identified as 45-year-old Juan Luna Montijo from Yuma. According to the Yuma County Sheriff's Office, they received a report of a gunshot wound victim around 4.40 p.m. The victim was later pronounced dead at Yuma Regional Medical Center.